Hey, welcome to your August feng shui forecast. Trust me, it's not too late. You might be thinking, Jeanette, it's August 5th. Yes, I am filming and uploading and editing all in the same day. But the new month doesn't really come in until like the 7th, 6th, 7th-ish. Some It's different every month, but we are not too late. You are right on time getting this video. Monthly, I share with you where the different energies in your environment are coming in so that you can use the energy in your environment to your advantage. What does that mean? That means that you can use the energy in your space to help you manifest more and go further quicker. And boy, is there a lot going on in the month of August. I'm Jeanette Zizikowski, your go-to feng shui consultant. Daily, I work with the motivated, the successful, and the inspired to use the energy in their home, in their space, to enjoy life's journey on the way to their many destinations. At the beginning of the year in 2023, I decided to also include some astrology help, not just feng shui. If you're familiar with this channel, I talk a lot about the cosmic trinity. Feng shui is 33% of your manifestation powers, man luck. That's earth luck. Man luck is 33% of your manifestation powers. And then there's heaven luck, which is that astrology, that bigger timing and astrological timing going on. So in this one in particular, I definitely want to call it out. Let's get straight into it. I think I have finally gotten the camera and the microphone to work together. It has been a long time coming for everything to come together. We'll fix the height soon, but we're not looking at me. We're looking at the slides and the different feng shui notes that i point out like i said before we get into the feng shui and the earth luck energies i'm looking at my notes over here i also want to talk about heaven luck heaven luck is astrology it's what the planets and the stars and the bigger forces are doing and in western astrology that language sounds like the saturn in the 10th house and venus retrograding and sagittarius being my rising element or rising sign that's Western astrology language. Then in Chinese astrology or Bazi, that's the language of metal monkey, yin water rabbit year. 2023 is a yin water rabbit year, wood dragon, etc. You look at what your day master is and it's an element paired with an animal. I'm no Western astrologer, but I do follow a lot of great accounts that get me thinking about the Western astrology compared to this how we work with the metal monkey or just the different elements as well. And I, I've started to observe patterns of when Western astrologers say this, this is what Chinese astrologers say and how it all works together. And so sometimes I like to include that. I also have a few astrologer clients and particularly this week, I want to point out and shout out my client, Stillwater Alchemy, Matthew Oliver. He is so wonderful. It's this video in particular. Everywhere you look right now in Western astrology, people are talking about Venus in retrograde. And this is the video title right here. Everybody's talking about Venus in retrograde. And I think like six more planets are about to be retrograde just for some time. It's a lot to keep up with. I know Mercury goes retrograde in August. And that's usually when people panic or when astrologers put fear into us. And you guys know, I am not somebody who uses feng shui to cause fear, astrology to cause fear. If you listen to anybody, follow and listen to the people that leave you empowered, that leave you feeling you can make a difference, that leave you feeling ready to take action and not people who put this fear in you and try to have you make decision from there. And that's I love my client because the way that he shares astrology is like we are on the same page as no fear whatsoever. So I want to shout out this video in particular because of all these retrogrades going on. You can jump to around like the 30 minute mark. I mean, watch the whole thing. Sorry, Matthew, if you watch this, I'm not trying to get people to jump ahead. But if you start around the 30 minute mark, he answers a question at the end. And this one, he particularly goes into retrogrades and how to use retrogrades. And since we have so many coming up, if you want a positive, uplifting, empowering message, go chat with him or watch this and see how you can use all of these retrogrades to your advantage. Because that's everything we do on this channel is we use energy to our advantage to get further quicker and enjoy life's journey. In addition to what Matthew has to say about all the planets in retrograde, we also have metal monkey month. So we're in a yin water rabbit year. Metal supports water in the elemental cycle. So we have both of those working well together. Also, metal monkey is the beginning of metal season. So with Bazi and Chinese astrology, if you want to get ahead faster, 
you use your astrology, you plan your life events, your trips, your efforts, you plan them with the seasons of your life. Overall, globally, sorry, I am trying to figure out this mouse. Overall, globally, metal does support water. That is smooth. But more importantly, I want you to be thinking about your life. And for example, I am a yin earth day master. Earth, metal to earth is output. So in this metal season, which is August, September, October, I am planning for probably needing some more rest because output is like doing, it's projects, it's output, it's doing, it's projects, it's creating. And usually for me, that also means, especially after fire season, which is May, June, July, which is my resource, fire supports earth. So there's usually more clients, there's usually more eyes. I just have a lot more energy. I'm usually promoting things at that time and like being in the spotlight more, thinking about content more. And now output is kind of like, okay, what are we creating new? And usually I'm also like resting from all the intense fire. So that also looks like changing the expectations for myself and not pushing myself as much in the summertime. And then it depends if you're a strong day master or a weak day master. I am a strong day master. And so some of that fire does like wear me out, which usually means I notice the patterns of my life that I do need more rest in these times. So I change the expectations that I have for myself and how much I'm trying to push or get done or do. And that just like, especially for us achievers here on this channel who like to get a lot done and use all our, our time efficiently, it can really like give us permission to chill. <laughs> when you get a Bozzy reading and understand the seasons of your life, you can actually time your decisions and your efforts so that the effort you put in is like 10x. It's like having the wind at your back and everything you do is done with more impact than if you were to do it against the wind or at not as ideal timing. If you're interested in a Bozzy reading, you can certainly reach out to me, go through my website, go through my Instagram. I do provide Bozzy readings and can help you make these plans, figure out the seasons of your life, etc. Isn't it nice to do something once and know that it'll have twice the impact? Again, the achievers here, the efficiency lovers here, I love Bozzy for that reason. Whether you know your seasons or not, you should have some goals that you're working towards. Whether you know astrology or care about any of it, we all should be having goals that we are working towards each month so that we just use this life to the fullest, right? This monthly goal, what is one goal you have for the month of August that if you accomplish would move you closer to where you want to be at the end of the year? Now that we've chatted all things astrology and heaven look, let's go look into what directions are supportive to the goals we're trying to accomplish this year, this month and year. Before I talk about where to place your feng shui cures this month, first I'm going to talk about the best directions to use to support your goals and the direction that will cause more harm than good. This red triangle might be giving it away, but side note, if your front door is facing the southeast this month, you may anticipate some travel, traveling for work, traveling for a trip. If you've been considering it and wondering, oh, I've been really, if your like soul is calling you to travel and take a trip, and your front door faces the southeast, I would likely listen to that nudge. I hate to make general statements and general suggestions because we don't know what the base energy in your house is, but this combination at the southeast between the monthly energy and the yearly energy are really good for travel. And maybe it's just some unexpected travel as well. So if you've been considering it, lean into it. The Northeast is the direction that I advise not having your serious conversations in this month. This includes business and personal conversations. If you're looking to avoid conflict and avoid conversations going negatively this month, then don't do the important things in the Northeast. Okay, so the way this works, if you're new to this channel or new to these feng shui forecasts, I do this unlike anybody else. What we do is I have you create a goal for a reason. It might be financial, relationship, personal, health related goal. And then each one of these, you can use all of them, but each one of these has a specific like powerful energy that supports your goal. So listen up to what each of these has to offer and see which one you should really spend extra time in this month 
to support those actions. And then at the end, I'm going to give you the cures and the things to place in each direction. If your goal this month has to do with getting a promotion, climbing the corporate ladder, getting a raise, moving up or being seen as a leader, you want to use, use, use the south direction of your home. The energy coming in there is great for military. It's great for government. It's great for it's metal. So it's following the steps. It's doing it, following the rules. It's climbing that corporate ladder. So if that is something where you need metal, use the south. If your goal has to do with an increase in wealth, money, creating something to sell, making progress on a project to earn money, then the west is for you. The west this month, I'm also looking at my low shoe chart over here. It has the wood creative energy. It also has the peach blossom energy. So this is also a good one for relationships. If you're looking to cultivate that sensual, creative, lusty, feeling then the west is what we are looking at got a lot of screens i'm looking around the west is the direction that you want to use wealth it's creation it's creativity it's a wood energy to help you be creative with projects making money or even creativity in relationships it's creation and together this month the annual and the monthly equals 10 which is always good for creating wealth and new things Last direction, if your goal needs mentors, inspiration, clarity on what the next steps are, or next steps to take towards abundance, love, and work, whatever you're trying to create, if you're needing that, again, mentors, inspiration, or clarity towards what you're trying to create, then the Southwest is for you. The, my reasoning for this is annually we have the one. One is those mentors, those that inspiration that clarity it's water it's wisdom and we have eight coming in to support it now eight and earth don't always play nicely together but eight is a auspicious earth element this combination i find has been very beneficial for that clarity and that attracting the next thing you need to get towards abundance now let's take a closer look at balancing the elements in your environment when you balance the elements in your home life is just easier this is what most people are very familiar with when it comes to feng shui for the month i like to do it differently but i do understand i'm a big proponent of using the energy we are energy our space holds energy and it's the energy that brings us the opportunities but i do also understand the niceness of feeling in control feng shui always helped me feel in control where things when things were out of control placing that bamboo understanding that you're mitigating the energy in that space placing the metal knowing you're going to calm any of the misfortune energy that's in your space so i do still like using these cures and i still do like sharing it because i do understand some people find a lot of comfort and power in it but don't forget to use one of those three auspicious directions this month when you're drinking your coffee or open the windows or just keep it particularly clean knowing the energy is working for you so here's how to create harmonious energetic relationships in your space in the north we have bamboo north and east we have bamboo that is to keep some of the metal energy busy in the east for the year you should already have something like a wulu yes you want it can be any metal so it could be six metal coins, but the Wulu is particularly helpful for this sickness energy that comes in and then wood for the month. This wood actually promotes and rather than mitigates, it promotes the nine energy that's coming in the east. Southeast and south are good. Southwest is that clarity and that abundance. We want to support the eight energy that's coming in. So anything that's a prosperous symbol and also metal anything or if you have like your vision board your vision board can go in the southwest anything that represents abundance and prosperity to you can go in the southwest this month and place it with the intention of what you want to call in gratitude knowing everything is working out for you in the west this month we need water we have metal and wood together to so to smooth out those energies we want water so this is a black bowl but you just want still water it would be okay if you had a water feature here, it's not an obvious yes, but you could give it a go if you wanted to give it a try, especially if you're really wanting to promote that creativity or that romantic love. If you have a water feature and you're like, where should I put it? Test out the West this month. Typically, or not even typically, but 
I would more so recommend still water, clean still water or something black, something asymmetric shaped, something that represents water, picture of water. And then in the Northwest, we have fire and metal because we have two things that really need to be suppressed. So we have the annual energy five in this direction. That's what the metal, this, the six, um, six coins should be there all year to and any metal. It might, you might, might not be using coins. Maybe you're using a silver bowl, a pewter bowl, a bronze vase, any kind of metal to suppress the difficult five that's in this direction. And then red this month, which is a little counterintuitive because if the five's there, it's like, why are we putting fire? So only if you also have metal, you don't really want to promote this, but it's okay if you have something like a rock salt lamp that is tempering the three, burning the wood energy that's coming. Again, only if you have the metal. Otherwise, this month, don't use the northwest direction either. So now that we've gone through the heaven luck energies that are coming, how to use astrology to our advantage and that heaven luck energy to our advantage, and we've looked at how we can use our environmental luck and the energy in our environment to our advantage, and you've set your goal, now I like to introduce an action step to keep you going. Sometimes we're so tired, we can't even think of our goals and we still just can't come up with how to use the energy. And so I like to also include an action step or maybe you have all those things and you just want to be an overachiever. And so you also do these action steps. They're not just made up. They are specifically thought of for the energy that's showing up this month. So it they aren't random. I intentionally think about what it is that I do last or what I suggest. Last month's action step was to act as ideal you in 2024. Like how does 2024 you show up how are they what's going on who are you in 2024 it was to be an example that month in july that you want to be and act as if you want to be by 2024 because the energy last month was a glimpse half of a glimpse at what next year's energy will kind of be like and also don't worry if you're like oh my july was crap like i can't i don't want that to be my whole 2024 they're not identical there's just it's just where the feng shui energies were. They're going to be in the same directions next year for the year. But the overall elements next year, I think we have wood dragon. I don't even know if it's yin or yang wood. It'll be yang wood dragon. That will be different. The months and the combinations like we're going to be in metal monkey month that all that stuff changes. The, astro the astrology side changes. The feng shui is just a small sample. So don't worry if your July was terrible because it's only like a small taste. Anyway, you were meant to show up as ideal you, which is really, that part for me at least is, was really exciting now that I think about it. Let me know in the comments how that turned out for you. How was your July? Was it good? Was it fun? Was it exciting? Do you look forward to 2024 now? Or are you like, uh, no. This month is inspired by some recent clients. I want you to dream rant. The older we get, the less we dream, the less we use our imagination, the more we say things like, that's unrealistic. You're dreaming. It's too late for that. I'm too old for that. I just would never do that. Kids want to be astronauts and action heroes and no one is telling them that it's too big. So when did that stop? When did we be not become the kid anymore? When did it switch into like this? You're dreaming. Well, yeah. Shouldn't we still always be dreaming? Why do we let kids dream, but we can't dream as adults? When did that end? So for one minute this month, any day, this is so simple. Right after this video, how about end it? Get out a piece of paper. And for one minute, I want you to set a timer for a minute, get a piece of paper, and I want you to dream rant. Don't even think like this sounds crazy or this could never happen. Just say, wouldn't it be nice if, and just say everything. And there is no obligation for you to follow through. There's no obligation for you to put pressure on yourself that you have to accomplish what you're saying. It's just going to be a really nice, wouldn't it be nice if, and some of those things are going to stick. And I don't want you to overthink like, oh, what would I do with all that money or the, I couldn't actually make this travel. My, my kids are at home. I can't actually travel on a yacht for 10 weeks, but like just dream and don't overthink it because we need to be flexing that imagination bubble. We need to be flexing bubble muscle. <laughs> we need to be flexing those muscles. Special heads up first, like this video if you liked it just a little bit. 
comment below if you are looking forward to 2024, how your July went, let me know. But next week's video is going to be five ways feng shui can help relieve you of anxiety and stress. So subscribe now, click that notification bell so that you are ready and alerted when that video comes out. We can all take a little bit of notes or use a couple of them to just help us feel even more blissed about life, relieve some of that stress that's so unnecessary. I'll see you there.